Hi, everybody. It was really great meeting everyone in Uganda. I'm so glad you came out to find out about Lieberland. And I'm glad you got some value from the things I said, because many people said they got value. And when I got back, the first thing I did, wanted to do was give you this bonus. Um, in addition to the book, a bonus, because everybody asked me a similar question, or not everybody, but many people were dealing with this issue of responsibility and initiative. My people don't take initiative. They don't take full responsibility. They ask me every tiny thing they need to do. They always seem to need my approval. So a lot of you had this similar problem. In fact, what I did was, and I enclosed this in the email to you, I created a whole curriculum around that. It's a curriculum for a whole team. I'll talk to you at the end of this video about why I like to work in teams instead of with individuals. This video will give you as an individual, you as a manager or team member, some new practices you can bring to your company so that you can already start to understand um, what you can do. You can maybe already make some changes based on what I'm gonna tell you here, and you'll get a taste of what I teach. Um, and it's really just designed for all of you who said that what that, that you got value from what I said before. So let me say some more things. So this is about responsibility. And if you have people in your company who or your organization that are always asking for mission, one of the reasons is because they're afraid of consequences. They're afraid of either change, not being accepted, they're afraid that if they do something wrong, they might lose their job. Certainly there are certain types of jobs and certain type of managers where the consequences can be worse than losing your job. Um, but we're not gonna talk about that. I'm sure that's not in your organization. But losing your job is very important to people. You know, they don't want they don't want to have that problem. So people ask for permission because they feel that if they make a mistake, there could be bad consequences. Sometimes the consequences aren't even that bad, but people consider them bad. So I noticed people were very service oriented and they wanted to please you. So in your organization, even if you just told somebody you were displeased with their result, they might never try to do something again because you were displeased. Now, that's another issue and that's why I teach in teams, we have to deal with people being sensitive about other people being displeased because if you're doing work, sometimes you're gonna make mistakes, that's obvious. So people need to know that it's okay to make mistakes and that you're gonna to have to deal with sometimes people being displeased, that's just part of life. So that's another area. But for you as the manager, you need to really make sure that when people walk away, they don't feel like the consequences were something they never want to experience again. So if you ever lose your temper, if you ever um, threaten to take a job away from them, give them less responsibility the first time they make a mistake, or even if they just don't know what acceptable mistakes are, they're going to be afraid and they're going to always ask for your approval. So if you wanna start empowering people, you need to take a look at whatever it is your practice might have been, and it might not even be you. It might be the first manager that they had. It might have been the manager next door to you. It might be somebody else. If they've ever experienced a bad consequence of taking initiative, they may never want to take initiative again. They may never want to make a mistake. And then they may want to be in a position where even if they made a mistake, you approved it. So they can say, well, that's what you told me to do. So that they can never, they can be immune from any bad consequences. So you need to take a look at that and have a conversation. Just say, hey, I'm sorry if in your last job that manager yelled at you. I'm sorry if you know that my manager loses his temper or I lose my temper. And just really don't, you know, I want you to, I want to apologize for whatever's happened in the past and assure you that you're not going to lose your job for doing this, this, and this. The second issue is what's this, this, and this? What can I give my people permission to make mistakes about? Now you may want your people to never make mistakes, but we know that's unrealistic. People make mistakes. In fact, it's the only way to learn. That's the other reason that people have a cultural bias against trying new things. We go to an educational system and it tells us you got to get the right answer or you get bad grades. You got to get the right answer or, um, you know, you're going to get kicked out or the teacher's going to criticize you or worse than that. Again, I don't know how your school system is, but there's all kinds of punishments that you get for being stupid. You get rejected. You get to feel, you know, you might feel very stupid in front of the class if you get um, if you get an answer wrong when you raise your hand. That's an incredibly embarrassing situation for people and they may never want to experience that again. 
So you may be dealing with people who have a past of consequences. You need to actually have a conversation and say, look, inside of this organization, you can make these kinds of mistakes. It, uh, we're going to give you a certain allocation, let's say a certain budget, and you can try new things with that budget. We're going to allow you to make a mistake, you know, the same mistake once or twice. After that, we're going to, um, you know, then we'll look at maybe you're not in the right job or something, or maybe we, we have to retrain you. But if people feel they're going to lose their job every time they make a mistake, they will ask for approval. So those are some tips about how do you make people take responsibility for the things that are going on in your organization. In the second part of this video, I'm going to help you take a look at how you, what responsibility is. I mean, responsibility isn't blame and help you take a look at some areas where you'd like to get different results and how responsibility is connected for that. So what you want to do is take an area in your life where you have some result you don't like. It might be the area we just talked about, like these people don't do their job, but it might be something like, I don't know, I bicker with my coworker or uh, my daughter, for example, in my case, I don't like that my daughter doesn't appreciate me. And you might say, okay, that's the problem in my area. It might be my weight or it might be whatever it is, my salary, anything that there is. And the first thing you want to look at is why is it that way? What are you telling yourself is it's that way? So for me with my daughter, I might say, well, you know how teenagers are. They're always that way. Girls never appreciate their mom. That's just how it is. Or I might blame her. Well, she's got, you know, she's got this and that problem in her life and she takes it out on me. All these different kinds of areas. So you want to take a look. What is the explanation you give yourself about who's to blame for this problem and why it is that way? You might want to write it down. Once you've taken a look at all those things, you might also take a look around and say, well, is there anybody who I know who has the same circumstances I do, but they don't have that same problem that I do? So if it's your salary, you might say, well, th this person was born in Africa and they have the same education as I do, but somehow they managed to do better than I did financially. So you want to take a look around and start taking a look at how often they complain about their problems. And that's really where you want to start looking. And now, in life, we either have the result we want or we have our reasons why we don't have the result we want. And so the next area you want to take a look at is, okay, if I'm blaming something out there, ooh, that was my text, sorry. If we're blaming something out there for our problems, then we have no power. Like if you say the problem is the government, if you say the problem is my life circumstances, if you say the problem is teenagers are always like that, then what can you do to change it? Really nothing. So one of the things you want to get is that when people say take responsibility, it's not like a punishment. It's not blame. It's power. If you say, okay, I know that I was born in this country with this education or with this background, or you say, well, I know that I have a teenager and that's how it is, but I have to take responsibility for the results I want. And I'm the one who put myself in this situation. I'm the one who didn't do this or didn't do that. Then you have the privilege of changing something about it. As long as it's the circumstances out there that caused your problem, there's nothing you can do. And if it's something in here that I could have done, then I have power. And this is the real distinction you want to make around the responsibility, both for yourself and for the people on your teams. Responsibility means I could do something about it. Responsibility means I have more power. And um, so that's the main basic concepts around responsibility, a little exercise. Hopefully that you've gotten something out of this. As I said, we've created a curriculum around this. Love to talk to you more. There's another bonus below, by the way. You could get a 45 minute coaching session with me. Uh, where we speak one on one about a specific issue or specific area that you want. So you can just sign up below and get a free coaching session with me. Love to talk to you. I mean, I had a great time and uh, all of you were great. So happy to talk to you. And uh, if you want to have us come in, then also sign up for a free talk and we'll talk about having us come in. The reason that we like to work in teams is that it's very difficult to change a culture when only one person changes. It seems that many of the organizations that we talk to, they have a particular organizational culture that's causing their ineffectiveness. 
And to change the whole culture or change team culture, the best way to do that is with teams of either the whole company or 20 to 50 people where we work together with the team and we create new procedures that everybody holds each other accountable for. So it's not just you coming in with some new insight, but actually as a team, we teach people to communicate with one another. We teach people to change their own mindsets and we have your teams actually create for themselves the changes that they want to see happen so that it's not anybody coming in from the outside. It's not a recommendation. It's something that you get to create yourselves as a group. And then once the group creates it, then you have a higher level of accountability. So that's what we do. That's what me and my colleague do. Please make sure you get the book. If you'd like, sign up for 45 minutes of um, coaching with me. I'd love to talk to you and uh, let me know if this is helpful to you. Thank you.